Okay. So hi, I'm Dr. Beth Plachek, a clinical social worker in Sugar Grove, Illinois, and I'm so happy to have Kevin O'Connor with us. Kevin is a licensed marriage and family counselor, a professional speaker, um, speaking coach, my speaking coach, and member of National Speakers Association. Welcome, Kevin. Well, thanks, Beth. Great to be here with you. And you know, we're doing a series today, a series of four different topics, the importance of being friends, becoming an adult, the art of discipline, success, and the importance of balance in life in any particular order. Um, so these are topics that are important to both teens and their parents. So today we're starting with the importance of friends. So, you know, in high school, that's the biggest thing is who <laughs> likes me and uh, does anybody like me? That's right. That's right. And especially with the virus that's been going around, the parents are asking the exact same questions because their friends are distant from them as, as well. You know, Truman Capote, the famous author, said he was famous for knowing all kinds of people and remembering their names and mm. famous and infamous people. And um, they asked him, uh, how do you have so many friends? He said, to have a friend, you have to really be a friend. Exactly. And can you tell me a little bit about your thoughts about just what does it take to be a friend? Well, interesting that you said, you know, he was so good at remembering people's names and something about them. People love to be remembered. If you want to make a friend, you don't talk about yourself. You can say, hi, I'm Beth. And, you know, and what's your name? But then try to remember the name. You know, one of my teenagers in my, in my practice was very disappointed because one of her friends forgot her birthday. Remembering important things. You know, remembering that you saw them in math class or that they have a dog. So that you have something to talk about and ask them about. People love to be able to share themselves. Why do you think it's so important really emotionally important for, especially for teenagers to have friends and to be so dependent on what a friend says, almost like the wind blows. What's going on with them, do you think, that we should know about? Well, I think it's really important to know that they are, uh, teenagers are making the transition from their parents' home as children to the home that they're going to have as adults. And so nobody acts in isolation. Everybody has to have somebody. So that's why, you know, whatever their parents says is God or their friends say is gospel and their parents are wrong, despite the truth or the reality of those situations. So as they're making that transition, they're trying to figure out what's important to me. What can I live with and not live with? And, and do, does, do I fit in or am I like alone in the world and weird? And they don't want to be that way. Yeah. Does this apply equally to people who might be considered extroverts are those who consider to be introverts? Do, do, do they need, do they both need friends in the same way? They both need friends for the developmental process. What's different is the way they interact. Introverts tend to process interiorly. So if they're with large groups of people for a long time, it's exhausting. <laughs> you know, they're like, I gotta go home and take a nap or I gotta be alone. And, and people will say that to me, I need to go home and sit in my own room for half an hour. Yeah. Um, but if you're an extrovert, you're energized by other people. You don't know that what you think until it comes out of your mouth. Yeah. So they might not want to be by themselves so much. They still need to process, but they're not worn out by it. But both need to know there's other people like them. Yeah. When I first met my wife, uh, my mother took a picture of me in our breakfast area, and I was on the phone like this. And I guess I've been on the phone for a couple of hours with okay. uh, then was going to be my wife Rita at some point later. So, and I noticed that um, a lot of parents will talk about uh, my child is up in their room, they're on the computer all the time, they're talking to their friends. Is is it the same sort of thing that maybe the parents went through on the phone, or or can there be unhealthy ways for kids to be connecting now? I would say, especially with COVID, you're, we're going to be electronically connecting a mm. lot. I mean, we can teach them how to do it safely. And I, I do hear many kids who are saying, okay, I have a certain number of friends. We do the same things. We, you know, we're all very careful. But yes, the computers and, and texting a, is a lot the same, except that we can also accidentally get into uh, areas that are not good for us. Mm. 
We can end up visiting sites that are wrong, that will damage us if we look at them or participate in them. You know, we're talking about g gambling, pornography, those kinds of things. Yeah. It's, it's also not good. You know, we used to always have to hang up the phone at a certain time when it's in your room. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. kids are on way too late mm -hmm. and that's when the other kids are telling them things like, I don't, I want to hurt myself. You know, this, my boyfriend's mean to me or my girlfriend's doing this. And that gets kids in, off and in over their head. The electronics are like the phone, but they present greater opportunity to exposure of more adult things at an earlier age. Yeah. The, um, uh, the thing about, uh, teenagers is uh, you know you have told me in the past they're experimenting with who they are uh, and and sometimes our friends define us they start to make us decide that we're in this group or in that group or we're not in this group or not in that group at, at what point do you think parents should be concerned about the kinds of friends that are starting to define their child well i think anything that takes them away from family values really wow. needs to be taken a look at. So, you know, if, if your child suddenly is drinking a lot or comes home under the influence of, you know, different drugs or is defying curfews, you want to look at why that's going on. Is there something that your child is dealing with that they need to talk to somebody or are they trying to fit in? Either way, it's the wrong, inappropriate, ineffective way to do it but they definitely need to get some help at that point. So, um, you know, and if, if faith is important and suddenly, you know, you, you should be questioning your faith because you want to make it your own. But if you're doing things at absolute defiance, parents need to intervene because they are the people who are primarily responsible for their children's success. Yeah. Do, do parents, I mean, is this something that happens by osmosis if you have a good family home with good values or is it something parents should actually talk to their adolescents, but do, do you talk about how to be a friend and friendships with your kids? Yeah, I think you should. I think everything really needs to be intentional. You can, um, you know, do it in the stealth fashion. You can be doing it while you're watching. Well, you know, when you watch a movie, you don't have to say, oh, I think Tommy's a bad friend for you. Um, but, you know, so when you're with this person, or look up that t guy on TV, What's happening in that relationship? Would you put up with that? Okay. You know, or, you know, one teenager was, he's only 17, no children whatsoever, mind you. But he was telling me how he was going to take care of his daughter. And I thought, okay, here's a hypothetical situation and you're a good parent or will yeah. be. So it's important, I think, to, to say that often if you just say that person is bad for you, nobody's 100% bad and they're going to start picking out the three or four times that they were actually very helpful. Yeah. And then the argument becomes, no, they're not. So rather than that, how do you feel about it? I'm concerned about these things. And this is your requirement. When you live in our house, you must be on time. Mm. You, you know, you must take care of yourself, those kinds of things. So on the one hand, there's the rules that mm -hmm. um, I suppose increasingly flex as children get older, Absolutely. but, uh, but then there's there's also the parent who asks a lot of questions, not uh, maybe asks it out of curiosity rather than trying to force the kid into a, a conclusion. Mm -hmm. um, so it sounds like there's a balance then between being kind of an, an opinionated parent who really puts a stake in the ground and the kind of parent who's understanding this is a developing process and maybe the child needs to talk more than. Right. And I would say, be prepared to talk at two o'clock in the morning when they wake up, when they, yeah. you know, the dark is where they're not making eye contact. They can be more honest and vulnerable in a oh, car, yeah. whether they're driving or you're driving um, because they have, they're, they've got to look at something else. You know, it's not that inquisition. And, and it's really hard for parents, especially with their first ones to remember, they're not teenagers. The parent isn't a teenager anymore. And, and so just because you did something when you were a teenager doesn't mean you want to say, oh, that's fine. You know, I'm fine. You'll be fine. No, it's not OK. You know, you don't want to say everybody drinks. You can drink, you know. Yeah. What, what if we as parents, though, have come from a, a home that's been very tough to live in? Maybe. Maybe our parents were alcoholic or maybe their parents split up and it was a very ugly scene or maybe there was death 
uh, in, in our own parents. And so we then become parents and we're wondering how to do all that. Are there, are there any thoughts that you have about both how to be a parent and also how to be a friend to our growing children? Right. Well, you know, and I, there's a part here where we have to say, if we don't know, if we feel uncomfortable, if we can't do it, then we should seek outside help. And I would say this to teenagers, and I would say this, this the same thing to parents. If we recognize that it's something that we have not faced or experienced before, make an appointment with a therapist and sit to our counselor at school and say, hey, what's, how can I handle this? What is a strategy that would work? What's a, a reasonable expectation? You know, just like when a, if a, a student comes to me and says, you know, um, I'm worried about my friend she says she's going to hurt herself. Well, that's no longer a teenage conversation. Mm -hmm. That's a professional conversation that you get help with. And I think that's important that kids know they should get help. Parents know they should get help because we can't do it all by ourselves. Yeah, I, I know when, when I was growing up, I think going to see a counselor or psychologist or a psychiatrist was really bad stuff. Right. And although we would go see the pediatrician and we would go to doctors and all that kind of stuff, but somehow there was this shadow of going to a counseling. Has that changed at all in, in, in recent years in terms of how parents should think about getting quote, quote, help? So yes, um, very definitely. There are still some people who don't, they're like, they're too vulnerable. They feel like somebody's going to analyze them, not realizing that what they're doing is they're participating. They get to say, I don't want to talk about that. And a therapist, a good therapist, as you know, is going to say, I absolutely respect that. I just am curious, what stops you? What, what's uncomfortable about that? Don't tell me the, the issue. Talk, let's talk about the discomfort, which helps the person become self-aware. That's what we want. We, yeah. we don't want to get in their lives and ma manage them. But at the same time, I'm going to tell you, it's very common. Some people are like, it's like a badge of honor. I, I'm working with the therapist and I love it. Okay, yeah. I'm going. So it's, a, you know, it's not like it was when we were kids. That's for sure. Right. What could we expect when we're bringing uh, maybe a reluctant child or a reluctant husband or, or, or spouse to counseling for the first time, we walk in the door, what, what happens behind that closed door when we're bringing people who may or may not be completely on board with our thinking about it? Well, in my office, the very first thing is we talk about what the rules and the expectations are of, of therapy, that confidentiality, you know, that it's, that it's, unless you write, give a release, I'm not telling anybody anything about anything. You know, even the courts would have to go through my lawyer and why would the courts care? So, you know, I mean, like that's, I think that's important. I think they get to feel that it's a, a regular conversation. It's not like you see, you know, Sigmund Freud analyzing every thought, but be a curiosity about how does that affect you? How did what you say, how did what you experience affect you? What do you notice about it? What kinds of decisions do you as, a, as the client want to change? And I typically use the word client because rather than patient, I'm not doing it to them. Mm. We're working together to do, get, get that done. And I always say, give it three times and there's a million good therapists. I can make a referral if you don't like my style. And I think all therapists kind of take that approach. And then after that, some days you feel like you're talking about nothing. But the next week you, when you come back, you go, I just realized, oh, boom. <laughs> and then there you are. Yeah. So you're really in a conversation with somebody who's just very curious, asking you questions that helps you understand yourself better. Exactly. And somebody who's not going to be with you 24-7, yeah. because I may ask the same thing as a parent, but I'm not going to see them at the breakfast table or, you know, checking on them all the time. They get to independently kind of infiltrate ideas and see what works for them. So this is the question I always want to ask therapists. So I'll make this my last question, if that's okay. okay Beth. That'd be fine. Um, does this stuff work in your home? You know, it's really interesting. Um, I'm a much better therapist having raised my kids. Uh, those, those moments, everything's like, oh, I just missed the boat entirely. 
And, and other times, you know, now that our kids are adults, um, they'll go, hey, you know what, you were right. At which point I go, I say, pardon me, because I want to hear it again. Um, but, you know, so nobody does it perfectly. And yeah. that's the that's the gift. Yeah. Nobody is perfect. We just keep working at it because we care about our kids and we care about each other. Very good. Thank you, Beth. This is just very, very interesting. I haven't really talked to anybody for this long of a period of time about what makes for friends. Thank you very much. Thank you.